Let's celebrate the magic of short stories and poems. They are truly magical, aren't they? They make us feel happiness, heartbreak, horror, hope, hatred, and so much more. Namaste people. Welcome to Shweta's Basket, a weekly stories and poems podcast, and I'm your host Shweta Singh. The story that I have for you today is titled Second Life and it's written by Kavita Yarla Gadda. And it's part of a collection of short stories titled When You Can, Why Not. Now Kavita who by training and profession is a civil engineer with a masters in environmental science is a writer and a poet by passion her love for environment technology health and culture and social media has translated into many essays articles and short stories on various print and online platforms to read more from the author you can visit her website www.kavitayarlagadda.com So here's her story Second Life The night sky was filled with zooming rockets and colorful display of fireworks All the houses were lit up with diyas young and old irrespective of age were outside their houses burning crackers The atmosphere was filled with festivity, hope and anticipation in this small village of Rajasthan, Sanganer. The village was busy with the celebrations. Priya slowly sneaked out of her house and edged her way across other houses. She checked again and after confirming that nobody was watching her, she hurried towards the temple. Her eyes were searching for Deepak. He had promised to meet at the temple while everyone else was busy. Priya looked all around the temple, but there was no sign of Deepak. She stood there with a lost expression. She was jolted out of her reverie as someone came up from behind and hugged her. She squealed in fright only to see that it was Deepak. "You scared me, Deepak," said Priya, turning around to face him. Deepak draped an arm across her and both of them sat down on the edge. I was waiting for you and then I saw you approaching and hid said Deepak with a cheeky grin looking fondly at Priya. And tomorrow I have an important meeting with a client. He wants me to design his website. Can you believe that? said Deepak in an excited voice. That is amazing. You work hard and you deserve the work you are getting," said Priya proudly. "Give me another 6 months, Priya, then I will approach your parents with a marriage proposal. I can't wait to start a life with you. I only hope you can convince my parents," said Priya with a lost look. "Cheer up. Now I have mended my ways and I make a decent living. I'm sure they will agree." said Deepak Come on let's go i have an early start tomorrow he said pulling up priya by her hand Deepak and priya had met at a coaching center Deepak was a tutor at the center and priya was taking a course on web designing love had blossomed between them soon when deepak explained his background to priya she was shocked at the beginning but slowly came around Deepak was a convict serving prison time at the open prison at Sanganer. He was in his teens when because of his wayward and irresponsible lifestyle he had got into bad company. It was during this time that he was caught in a drug smuggling case and sentenced to 10 years prison time. After serving 6 years in a closed prison and because of his good conduct he was shifted to the open prison. The open prison was a godsend to him where he lived with his parents and sister. He worked hard for his living and touched upon his computer skills. Now he was a freelance designer. His hard work had paid off 
and he was getting good projects and great feedback. He had to serve another two years at the open prison. He wanted to marry Priya, who had completed her graduation and was staying with her parents in Sanganer. Her father was the head postman at the local post office. He had saved a sufficient amount of money and was confident that Priya's parents would agree for the proposal. Both of them walked hand in hand towards their homes. Deepak accompanied Priya till the end of her street and left for his home, promising to call her the next day. Days passed by and Priya and Deepak maintained their routine of meeting once a week at their temple. They happily dreamt about their future life together. Deepak was at the coaching center assisting some students when he got a call from Priya. She sounded frantic and was crying. Deepak couldn't understand a word. He asked her to slow down and tell him what had happened. Priya said that her father was looking for matches for her. The boy and his parents were coming to see her the next week. Deepak promised her that he would do something about it and call her in the evening. After going home, Deepak opened a safe and checked his savings and all other deposits. He came to a decision to approach Priya's parents with a marriage proposal. He informed his parents about his decision. They all concluded that only Deepak would go initially to meet Priya's family. Deepak called Priya and informed her that he would come and meet her parents the next day. The next day after work, Deepak mustered the courage to go and meet Priya's family. Dressed up in his best clothes and taking care to be presentable, he walked up to Priya's house. Priya ushered him in and introduced him to her father, Mohan Ram. Afraid of chickening out, Deepak delved straight into the topic. He first told him about his background and how he was serving a prison term and working as a freelancer. He mentioned about his meeting Priya and falling in love with her. He said that he was earning a decent amount and that his prison term would be over in a couple of years. He requested them to trust him and said that he wanted to marry Priya. Mohan Ram was quiet for some time. Priya and Deepak exchanged glances. After what seemed like eons, he spoke his mind. What makes you think that I will be willing to give away my daughter in marriage to a convict? Asked Mohan Ram. We love each other and I am no longer the same person and I make a decent living, said Deepak with a hopeful look. Priya's mother Sunita chimed in. You might have changed, but we are getting good proposals for Priya. How can we get our younger daughters married off if Priya is married to a convict? They will remain unmarried forever. Priya is still young and doesn't know what she is doing. We have to refuse this proposal, said Mohan Ram with a finality to his voice. Priya tried convincing her parents, but her father wouldn't listen and shouted at her to go inside and stop whining. Deepak tried to speak up, but Mohan Ram wouldn't listen and showed him out. Dejected about the turn of events, Deepak went home. Priya called him and told him that her parents had scolded her and that they were speeding up their search for a groom for her. She started crying and asked him if they should elope and get married. Deepak refused the idea and asked her, if she had any close confidant who was friendly with her father. Priya perked up and told him that Rajesh was a close family friend. He had recently got married and her father liked him very much. Deepak told her that if they could convince Rajesh to help them talk to Priya's father, it would be helpful. Priya said that she would talk to Rajesh immediately and call him back. After a couple of days, Rajesh visited Mohan Ram and his wife Sunita. He told them that, though Deepak was a convict, he had mended his ways and was earning well. He also said that he had spoken to Deepak 
and he liked him very much. He looked like an honest and hard-working person and Priya would be happy with him. Rajesh said that any person who mended his ways and knew the importance of hard work was any time a safer bet than other people. He requested Mohan Ram to give Deepak a chance to prove himself. After Rajesh left, Mohan Ram and Sunita discussed what he said. They agreed that Priya would be happier living with the person whom she loved than forcefully marrying her off to someone else. They called Priya and asked her to tell Deepak and his parents to come and meet them to finalize the wedding. An elated Priya called Deepak and told him the good news. She asked him to bring his parents to her home with the wedding proposal. A month later, Priya and Deepak got married in a simple ceremony at the temple amidst the presence of family members and friends. The young couple looked radiant and happy. Deepak was content at the happy turn of events and looked forward to a happy life. He thanked the open prison system for changing him into a better person. Good for Deepak, isn't it? Because all of us need a second chance in our life at least once. I actually had no idea that we had something like this, an open prison system. So after I finished reading the story, I googled it. And I think it's a great and progressive initiative. And you know, that's what is great about this book. It has 17 short stories, all fictional though inspired by real life and articles that the author has read. There are stories of domestic violence, bullying, sexual harassment, workplace harassment, live-in relation, gay rights and many others. But each story then explains the law or act that can be used to protect or punish as the case may be. Like, did you know that a contractor can be punished for not maintaining the proper plant cover on a road divider? I had never even thought about it. But now, when I travel on the highway next, I will certainly pay attention to this fact. So if you're looking for a book that's written in straightforward and simple style, is entertaining and educative, then do check this book out. It's available on Amazon. The link will be in show notes. And now, let's move on to the one question section. In the last episode, I asked you, in which season had the poet seen his lady love for the first time? The right answer is rainy season. Yes, this very beautiful rainy season. And the winner is Vasudha Pansareji. And she also happens to be the fastest finger fast. This is the fastest I have ever received an email for the one question section. She replied within an hour of uploading the episode. <laughs> it felt absolutely wonderful to see her email. Thank you, Vasudaji, for your prompt reply. And thank you, dear listeners, for your emails and comments on website and Facebook. They are the impetus I need to keep going, to keep bringing the best stories and poems I can from the best contemporary indie writers just for you. This shows your love for the stories and poems, and I'm ever grateful for it. And now, moving on to the one question for this episode. Which village is the story set in? You can email your answers to shweta at the richwetasbasket.com and you'll find the email ID in the show notes as well. We will announce the winner in the next episode. And people, do join me next Friday where I will recite a beautiful poem for you. It's full of positivity. And we could all use a bit of that, can't we? It's titled Nai Aas and is written by Aarti Joshi. And on that happy note, we come to the end of this episode. Do subscribe to my website www.trwaitasbasket.com so that you're always up to date with what's new in the basket. And stories and poems are not the only things. You will find book, movie and restaurant reviews in the basket too. And if you enjoyed this episode, 
then follow or like the podcast, share our episode on your timeline and tag us and recommend us to your friends. Help us reach more people. Shweta's Basket is available on 18 different platforms like Spotify, Apple and Google Podcasts, Ghana, GeoSavan and others. We're also on YouTube. With the complete list, check out the show notes. And if you want to get in touch with me, I am on Facebook and Instagram. And my handle is Shweta's Basket. And guys, in this day and age, it's a good idea to have a website. So if you're thinking of having one, then listen on. Because having a good-looking and professional website is just a click away. In the meantime, this is your host, Shweta Singh, signing off. Till we meet again, on the air, next Friday. Bye for now. Do you want to have a website of your own? Are you a writer, photographer, actor, makeup artist, hairstylist, or even a tutor, singer, painter, journalist, consultant? Or do you have your own cafe, restaurant, resort, holiday home, shop, small business, hospital, or even a blog, WordPress, or Blogspot account that you want to migrate to a good-looking website? Well, look no further. The Geeks will help you. And you will find them in the Geeks room at Artoons Inn. Just click on the link in the episode description. Yes, it's that simple to have a website. My website is hosted and managed by them. And want to know what I love about them? They are professional, customer pleasers, straight talkers and very competently priced. So what are you waiting for? Your website is just a click away.